In this tutorial, I will show you how to model a basic transformer using Comsol Multiphysics and how you could calculate the winding and core losses. So I will use a 3D component and the magnetic fields interface and the frequency domain study. So the input to the transformer will be a sinusoidal uh, signal. Let's first define the frequency, which will be 60 Hertz. And now I will construct the geometry. I will change the units to millimeters. So the way I will construct the geometry of the core is by inserting a, an outer a block. I will design the this block and then I will scale it to create a void in the at the center. So this is the outer block and you'll have to add a fillet. And then we can scale this block. The core will have a thickness of 20 millimeters. So for the scaling factor, it will be 60 over 100. And we are only scaling along the x and z axis, so we don't want to scale about, uh, along the y axis. OK, so this is the core. And we will need an air domain. Let's call it air. And finally, we need to define a region uh, on which we can define the coil. So we'll have a primary coil and a secondary coil. So the way I'm going to do that is by extruding this surface to the ends of the core. So you can specify the vertices. Choose any vertex on uh, the extreme sides of the core and click on build. You will see that the center region is also uh, extruded and that's okay because we will only assign a, a magnetic material to the core and everything in the center will be just air. And also in this model, I will use a, a single plane of symmetry so I will cut, cut away half the geometry. So a simple way to do that is to insert a block with half the thickness of air. And we will insert a union operation uh, before this block because we need to combine all the domains into a single object. And then we will have the symmetry block and then we can insert an intersection operation. Select the two objects and click on build. So now we have only half of the geometry. We can move on now to defining the materials. So first, let's define air. We'll have a relative permeability of 1, very low conductivity, and relative permittivity of 1. For the magnetic core, I will use a hyp hypothetical material. Usually, it can, it can be fer a ferrite material. So I'll, I'm just going to call it ferrite. Select the core. And I will use a relative permeability of 4,000. Electrical conductivity is usually very low for ferrite materials. And we don't need to define uh, copper for the coil because the electrical conductivity of copper will be defined in the physics. So now we move to the physics section and we need to add the primary coil and the secondary coil. We will add it as a surface.
and we will model it, model it as a homogenized multi-turn coil, which means we will neglect the skin effect in the coil turns. But we will have this models multiple turns. So let's say in the primary coil we have a bunch of wires that form 20 turns. And the coil type will be numeric because it's not linear and it's not circular. So we'll have to calculate the uh, compute the geometry of the coil. So for that, select numeric and the coil excitation will be a voltage. We will keep it as one volts. Here's the electrical conductivity. And the cross-sectional area of each single wire in the coil is given by this value. You can change it if you want to, or you can even specify the diameter of the, of the wire. We will keep the default value. Finally, for the primary coil, we need to select the input and the output. This is where the current enters the coil and the output is where it exits the coil. So COMSOL will use these two edges to calculate the geometry of the coil, how the current flows in the coil. And now we will add the, add the secondary coil. Again, select the surface. Homogenized multi-turn, it's again numeric. And for the coil excitation, we'll keep it current and we'll set the coil current value to zero. So basically this will model the coil as an open circuit. So we will get the open circuit voltage from it. Of course, in, an, in a real application, this will be connected to uh, a resistor or a load. So you will need to insert uh, an electrical circuit interface to uh, compute it but we will keep it simple in this model. And I will put 100 turns on the secondary coil. So the number of turns in the primary coil is 20. So we expect that the voltage in the secondary coil will be stepped up by a factor of five. Select the input for the secondary coil and the output. Okay, so everything looks good. So that's all for the physics. Now we can generate the mesh. I will use the physics controlled mesh, just make the element size finer. And another point I wanted to make in the physics, although I'm using a plane of symmetry, I did not have to modify anything because for this plane of symmetry, we know that the magnetic flux lines will be uh, parallel to the surface. And the magnetic uh, insulation boundary condition takes care of that. If, however, we have a plane of symmetry in which the magnetic uh, field lines are normal to the surface or perpendicular to the surface, you will need to add a different boundary condition, which is called perfect magnetic conductor. Okay, so the mesh is complete now. For the study, since we are using a numeric coil, we need to compute the geometry of the coil. So we need a study step, which is called coil geometry analysis. This will be the first step and information from this step will be fed into the frequency domain study. In the frequency domain study, the frequency will be F, which is 60 Hertz as we defined. And now we, you can click on compute and I will show you how to calculate the winding and core losses after the solution is obtained. But let's say you have a more complex model in which you want to use the value of the core losses in the model. In that case, you, can, uh, you have to define it before you compute the solution. And the way you do that is you go to definitions and insert variables. So the formula for calculating the core loss is given by Steinmetz uh, equation, which is this equation you see here. We have three constants, A, B, and C. The frequency is F and the value of flux density is uh, the peak value. 
So in this model, we will have a sinusoidal signal. So the amplitude of the magnetic flux density at every point in the core uh, is basically uh, B peak. So we will define this equation. First, the constants A, B, C. Uh, these constants will be different for uh, each material. Uh, in this model, I will use some hypothetical values. And B, 1.6. Let's define the Steinmetz equation by PL. This will give the power loss per cubic meter. So A times the uh, amplitude of the magnetic flux density, which is given by mf dot norm b. And since we are using a non-integer exponent, COMSOL will give you an error if you, if you enter it like that. Uh, it will give you a syntax error. So to... Uh, Resolve this problem, you need to normalize the units. So in square brackets, you need to insert one over Tesla and put the whole expression inside the circular brackets. And we will do the same thing with the frequency. In this case, the exponent C is one, but for sake of completeness, let's just normalize the units. And if you want to obtain the total loss, which we will define by PL total, you need to integrate the power loss per cubic meter over the core. So for that, you need to right click on definitions, go to non-local couplings and define integration. This is an integration operator. So we will define the region of the primary coil and the secondary coil. And this is the tag name of the operator, int op1. So we can call this operator and we will supply it with PL. Okay, I will just add the, I will add the correct units to PL which is watt per meter cube. So after integrating over the volume, you see that it will be converted into, it will give you the total power loss, which is given by watts. So that's all, and now we can click on compute. Uh, the other loss, the winding loss, is given by copper loss, heating in the wire, which is caused by the flow of current. That's given by I squared R, so you have to multiply the resistance of the coil by the square of the current flowing through it. So we will do that after obtaining the solution. So the first step is now complete, and now the frequency domain is solving. Okay, so now we can plot the results. First, let's, lo let's look at the magnetic flux density. Right, and if you want to add the arrows, you can click on arrow volume. I will insert the arrows on the, the center surface. Okay. So this shows you the direction of the magnetic flux lines. If you wanted to uh, generate the full geometry or results, what you could do is a reflection. So you have to go to data sets and under 3D data sets, you have to select the mirror. And this will create another reflection. So it will give you the full result as if you have computed the, uh, as if you have computed the full uh, model without using any plane of symmetry. 
Uh, and there is one thing I forgot to change in the physics since we used a plane of symmetry. For the geometry analysis, we need to insert a factor of two for the coil length because by cutting away half the geometry, we also removed half of the coil length. So this is applicable for both the um, primary and secondary coils. Uh, this will not really affect the results if you don't want to calculate the winding losses, but to get the winding losses, you need to make this change. So I will compute the frequency domain again. It will take a few seconds. Okay, so now we need to uh, look at the core loss. So the way we'll do that is by inserting a global evaluation node and we define the core loss as PL total. Evaluate that and this is the value in watts. Another way to get this value is if you don't want to define the variable uh, here and you don't want to define the integration operator, you can click on compute, get the solution, and then under derived values, you can go to integration and insert a volume integration. And then you can either insert the uh, Steinman's equation here, which is given by PL, or you can insert PL directly. So if we Type PL, you see, can see the unit is watt because it is integrated over a volume. We select the region for the primary and secondary call and click on evaluate. So the value is the same. So these are just two different methods that you could use. And for the winding loss, we will insert a global evaluation. And we will insert the coil current. This will be squared and it will be multiplied by the coil resistance. So I'll do this for the uh, primary coil. The same formula is applicable for the secondary coil. So you can see the unit is what? Click on evaluate. You will get a complex number because we are using the frequency domain, but if you want to obtain the amplitude of the, or the maximum value of, uh, of the loss, you can take the absolute value of this complex number. Click on evaluate again. So the loss is 0 0.02 watts. Finally, we also need to check the, verify the voltage of the secondary coil. So, in global evaluation, we will look for voltage. So the first voltage is for the primary coil, and the second is for the secondary coil, given by number two. Okay, we will take the absolute value. So you see the, we defined a voltage of one volts for the primary coil and the voltage across the secondary coil is 4.95, which is a little bit less than five volts, which we had expected. Uh, this is normal because in real life, a transformer is never 100% effective. The higher the permeability, the, the closer this value will be to five volts. So that's all for modeling a transformer. Thank you so much for